there. Welcome to another episode of Animating and TV Paint Animation. My name is Shallon, and I'm from P2 Studios. Today we are going to be working with an option in TV Paint within the FX stack. And this option is going to be the Toon Shading. So Toon Shading is um, almost exactly what it sounds like. Toon Shading is where it takes the color from your object within the scene and creates um, what we refer to as rim lighting to create the illusion of depth and this is referred to as tune shading in, in 2D. They also do this in 3D as well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this is done. Um, so I created a animation, a short walk cycle. It's only um, going to be 70 frames long. Uh, I've already set it up here. And what I did to create this, I just went ahead and to my 3D animation program. I use Cinema 4D R17. Uh, you can use any other 3D program you like just to get the reference pictures. So what I did is I went ahead into the Cinema 4D create a humanoid model or a human and I took and went to a worm's eye view because that's I wanted to create more of a the perspective of a giant walking and so I did that and this is the image or the um, sequence of images that were rendered from that so you know turn off the outline and as you can see here, the walk cycle is really short because from a giant's perspective, I wanted to slow it down. And um, so what I did is I went ahead and rotoscoped or traced over these reference images with, and put it on a separate layer, as you can see right here. And I'll unhide this. And as you can see, I put the outline around my reference images that I got from my 3D model. Um, and the way you do this is when you go into your uh, 3D program and you render it out, then you take the rendered images and you import them by going to new and then put, um, naming your layer. I usually name it like a reference layer or walk layer. And then um, I change whatever the behavior is. Um, usually I put none. And then you go to import. And when you go to import, you'll find where your file folder is for your, um, your production or your um, image, where you store the images from your rendered images from the 3D program. And then what you do is you just import those into here and then you'll have your rendered images all out in sequence. And then um, what I do is I take and create the render, um, I take the render images and I take the opacity down so that way I can trace over it without interfering with the foreground. So now that I have my rendered images, I stretched them out so the walk cycle is slower. And so I'm gonna turn off my reference and then I'm gonna, I'll show you a push play and see how it's slower. And that what that does, is slowing down the images or the sequence of images allows you to give it more scale and more weight, which is good for um, when you're trying to create uh, a walk cycle from an angle that you need it to be a much bigger or so it's huge. Um, so after I got this done, I just create a quick background reference layer. And this is just from my perspective so I can see what's happening. Um, and usually I'm just going to take and when he does the walk cycle, I'm just going to take the background and scale it up as he's walking. So as it looks like he's walking forward. But in this episode, we're um, mainly focusing on how to create this um, and take the object and create a tune shade for it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the first frame. I'm going to create, I'm going to fill it with like a gray texture. As you can see here, it's kind of a cool gray texture. And what I do is I go to my flood fill bucket here. And I go down here to my options for this, um, for this tool. And down here it says gap closer. Um, usually if you look closely at this, there is um, quite a number of gaps everywhere because this was just a rough outline. So what I do is I put a gap closer on five. Usually it's set at zero. So that way when I go to flood fill this area, it won't go outside of that gap. So I go ahead and make sure I got this selected, my flood fill tool here, and I just click on it. And it fills it in with the color that I have selected here. And you can choose these colors depending on whatever tool you like for the color picker, slider, or the mixer, or whatever you have in your bin. Um, so then we go to the next frame, and then we select, and we can click on that. And we can just do this for every frame. And I'll show you how to quickly apply the FX stack to all these frames at once. And see this one has too big of a gap here. So all we have to do is take the line tool, keep the same color, and then we can just take that gap and close it. And then go back to our flood fill tool and then flood it. And as you can see, the line disappeared because it's the same color as we're filling in, which is fine. It gives more of illusion for the, um, the tune shader. So we got one more frame here. And you can see there's another gap here. So we're just going to go ahead and create the line. And then we get the flood fill. Okay, so now that we got we scrub through our, all of our, our, our frames here, you can see we have the one part of his leg already colored with a solid gray color. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a rim light so that way it's darker here because um, in this scene, the sun, um, the angle of the rays are hitting um, towards this point of perspective. And this is a one point perspective as you can see lines are coming out so I'm using I use a, a point of perspective as a guideline for all of my images or my shots that I do to make sure that all the elements within the frame are in perspective and correct that way it, you know it lends to the illusion of it being real or believable so now that we got the color what we do is we activate our FX stack you can either go up to here to our um, our menu bar where it says image or effects and under effects you go to um, you go to stylize and then you can go down to tune shade but before we um, do that we're gonna go ahead and select all of these um, all these frames on this layer because we want it to apply it across the whole scene or a whole shot here. So we're just going to go ahead and select this. And make sure you select all the frames. And so we're going to go up to here. I'm going to just hit the FX button here. So it opens up my FX panel. And it says here, because I tried this before, it automatically brought up um, the add FX, which is under stylize, it'll be tune shading. And so that um, that was applied here and automatically comes up. Now, as you can see here, we have a preview activated and we have the HUD activated and my preview is full. Now, some computers can handle this, some can't um, just, you know, fill around with the options to see if they work or not for you. If not, you can take off like the HUD or the preview so that way you can um, render it out. Um, it shouldn't be too too heavy on your render on your um, processors to render this out. 
So what I do is, like I said in this um, in this scene, there um, the lights gonna be coming up from this angle. You can easily move this around. This is this is the HUD for your FX stack. And what you can do is you grab the the corner and you take the pivot and you can move it around. And what it'll do is it'll readjust where the light's coming from in your scene. And if you want to change the angle on which, where the, the shading goes, all you have to do is grab the middle one here and just rotate it. And this can be rotated any which way. See, as you can see, this portrays as if the rays are coming from this direction. And then if you turn it and you go on this way, it shows as if the rays are coming from this direction. So this is, um, this is kind of an omnidirectional, which means it's, um, you know, the, the point is omnidirectional. It will, it will affect whatever you're coloring, no matter where it is in the scene. But I usually put it up as like a reference of where the light's coming from. So the light's coming from here and it's going down towards, and you can adjust the, the intensity of the light just by simply pulling and dragging this out. And you can also take and adjust um, where the shadows will fall upon the inside or the outside of the leg. And to do this, you can just drag these in and out. And what it'll do is it'll, the intensity will increase and which will create more of a beveled look to it. So we're just gonna soften that up. You can do it all the way out. Where it's just a little bit soft as you can see and that what that does is this it distributes the light so um, more less centered and less focused so it gives it more of a softer feel or a rounded feel so we're gonna put it right about there for our options and then what we do is see make sure that you're in your layer is still selected all of your frames and so we're gonna go down here and we want to apply it on the current layer okay we don't want to do current groups because um, that will select um, well we don't have any groups right now because this is in its own layer but if you had a group folder of um, a bunch of different elements in your scene it would transform all the colors in that scene with this tune shading option so we're just gonna go to current layer. And then for our selection here, we're gonna um, do all instances or you can do selection. We're just gonna leave it on selections and then apply on frames. So we're just gonna go ahead and since we're set, we're gonna hit apply FX stack. And what that'll do is it'll apply everything, this, this certain, uh, this uh, tune shading to every single image within our, our layer. So let's go ahead and do that. It should render out pretty quick, again, depending on what your computer can do. So we're halfway there. So that was pretty quick. Um, it rendered it all out. As you can see, whenever you apply a, um, the FX stack or a FX option, to your scene, it's always going to render it out frame by frame. It doesn't render it out on the frames that you have. It always renders out frame by frame. So make sure before you apply the FX stack or any um, FX to your scene that you are complete or done with whatever you're animating because then if you have to go back, you're going to have to go back and animate on each one of these layers I mean each one of these um, keyframes so as you can see it applied the FX tune shading stack to our image here on every single keyframe here I'll close this out so you can see a little better So this saves a lot of time, as you can see, where you don't have to spend um, and airbrush this 
so it gives you a tune shading for all of your frames and also it gives it a more accurate um, shading tune shading to your um, object or your character and it's um, really a fast and effective way to increase your workflow so that's just one of the options again in the FX stack um, that we've gone over we'll be continuing to go over even more different options that you can do that enhance your animation so until next time